Welcome back to another Serger Tip Clip. Today I'd like to talk to you about needles and your serger and cover stitch machines. A lot of people think that there's only one needle that you can use in your serger, but that's not quite true. Depending on the type of fabric that you're using, the technique that you're doing, and the weight of the fabric, that can vary. So I'd like to talk to you about a few of the needles that you can use in your machine successfully and how they are different from each other and when, which one would be the best choice. If you look in your owner's manual, or if you open the front door of your machine and look inside that front panel, oftentimes the manufacturer has designated their preferred needle for that machine. And that's a good starting point for you, but don't be limited by it. Oftentimes you'll see the ELX705 needle recommended on sergers and cover stitch machines. And to tell you the truth, the ELX705 is what I use for overlocking as well as cover stitching most of the time, but not always. So let's talk about a few of the other th ones that you can use too. First of all, there is just your good old standard universal needle. When you put that in your machine, if you get a good looking stitch that the formation of the stitch is good, there are no skip stitches, you can certainly use that in many machines. Oftentimes that's a great choice in some of the older overlock machines. And that works very well. However, if you switch to a fabric, say a jersey or a an ITY knit, some of the knit fabrics may require a different needle. That would be the next one, the stretch needle. And the way that you can always tell is by making a sample. And you know me, I'm all about samples and testing everything before I go on to my actual project. So if you have an ELX705 needle or a universal needle in, and you run off a test line of stitching on your knit fabric, and the stitches, they don't look perfect, or they're skipping. That's telling you that you might want to change the type of needle that you're putting in. And it might be switching from an EL or a universal needle to a stretch needle, which has a little bit more of a rounded ballpoint on it than the universal needle and will help prevent skip stitches on that knit fabric. So you can try that out. As far as the size goes, I like to follow the rule that I like to use the smallest needle that I possibly can for the fabric. If the needle deflects or breaks, obviously it's probably not a big enough needle, but on most knit fabrics that I've used, an 80-12 or a 90-14 is perfectly fine. Most of the time I will try to use an 80-12 if I can get that to look good on the fabric itself. So that's the um, first change in that. Also, uh, if you are using a fabric that has a lot of Lycra, Elastane, Spandex, whatever the brand of the elastic in the fabric is designated as, you may need to even switch over to a ballpoint needle. Now, the only time I have ever had to use a ballpoint needle is when I did a swimsuit for someone. And that had that very stretchy four-way stretch. And I found that even with the stretch needle, it tended to skip stitches. And that's the one and only time I've used a ballpoint in my serger. But um, again, testing it will give you the right answer for that. Next, I'd like to tell you about top stitch needles. You may have seen my sew along for the fabulous flat lock and pin tuck placemat on my searcher tip clip playlist. And on that, there is a lot of flat locking and reverse flat locking. And I used a top stitch needle. Why? Because I was using a 12 weight heavier decorative thread that required a 
longer eye that the top stitch needle has, and it has a slightly deeper groove in it to accommodate that thick thread. A lot of people don't realize that you can use a top stitch needle in your serger, but yes, you can. So, um, but in overlock mode or flat lock mode only, I would not use it for a cover stitch. I don't think it'll work well, but the top stitch needle does have that longer eye and you can get 12 weight thread, eight weight thread, even woolly nylon to go through there. Now with woolly nylon, you may need to use a thread cradle or a needle threader to pull it through because it's got such a fluffy light type of consistency to the surface of it. You can't just put it through like regular surgical cone thread or even utility spools of thread. So, um, but that top stitch needle does allow you to use those gorgeous decorative threads. And that's one of the fun things about having um, some knowledge about your serger and being able to have a little fun with the decorative aspects of it. And knowing what needle to put in that will work well for those heavier decorative threads is terrific. So that is a top stitch needle. Let's circle back again to the ELX705 needles because there are a couple of different types. The ELX705 needles come in two sizes, either the 8012 or the 9014. But there's also another one that you may not have even noticed on um, the different needle racks in your sewing machine dealer store. And that's the ELX SUK CF needle. What is that? The SUK designates that that has a medium ballpoint on the needle itself, which makes it great for different knit fabrics. If you see a CF on any of your needles, uh, it doesn't have to just be the ELX705. It can be on the um, regular universals or stretch or uh, I think top stitch also comes with a CF also. That stands for chrome finish. And what does the chrome finish do? Well, it makes the needle slide through fabrics more easily. So it reduces friction and heat buildup. And typically a chrome finish needle might be slightly more expensive, but it will last longer and you'll get a beautiful looking stitch with it. In addition to the medium ball point on the SUK needle, there are a couple of other differences also. It has a long groove on both the front and the back of the needle and a slightly larger scarf, which is right above the eye of that needle. Thanks again for joining me today and we'll see you again soon for another exciting serger tip clip.